So I finally come down to Melnick. I've come down out of the mountains of, of where the monastery was. Uh, and I'm still kind of in the mountains now. And they have what they call pyramids. The Bulgarians call these pyramids. But really what it is is uh, sedimentary runoff from the mountains. Uh, the, a, lot of, a lot of sandstone structures that look like pyramids in their natural state. Uh, which makes for a lot of loam in the rivers. But in any case, uh, Melnik is a neat little town. There's only 385 year-round residents. But you could never tell because... Uh, it's, it's an older town designated for rest and wellness. And so there's lots of hot springs, lots of kind of spas and things like that. And uh, because of that, there's always an influx of Bulgarians or Greeks coming here. And really, like, you can't, <laughs> uh, year round, it's kind of a tourist de destination. So you can't really tell how many people actually live here. Well, the coolest things about this place is the construction. Uh, this this area is obviously it's full of authentic monasteries and older buildings and things like that But the residences the churches the commercial areas they've either been converted to restaurants or kind of cater shops catering to tourism or They've been turned into Museums now the cool thing about a lot of the the places that haven't been tended to yet is, is kind of off the beaten track You can walk right into these buildings that you know are you probably shouldn't, but there's nothing telling you not to go in there. And really, the, there's like two and three floors kind of falling out, and uh, you're really kind of at your own risk going in there. Uh, but uh, really neat authenticity uh, throughout the town. What I'm, I'm standing around now is the actual ruins of the, the old fortress. Uh, there's a fortress. There's also the uh, St. Nicholas's Church. Uh, lots of stuff. There's, there's signs that kind of tell you where to go in the area, and the entire town is one street from the bottom of a of a river basin kind of climbing up to the top uh, right right before it gets cut off by uh, the, the the peaked valley of the mountains so in any case really cool experience today saw Melnik saw Rojen saw like the monastery and stuff like that so tomorrow I'm gonna go back up to Sandansky uh, check out the town there um, if it's anything like it has been here it's nice and peaceful and stuff like that but Sandansky is a little bit more populated so We'll have to see how that one goes tomorrow. After leaving the Rojan Monastery, we headed to Melnik for lunch. We ate at a traditional mehana and dined on all traditional dishes, which are always rich in veggies, goat cheese, and olive oil. Of course, our gracious hosts wouldn't let us pay for anything and made us feel quite at home, inviting the restaurant owner and even local monastery tenant over to talk with us. All right, so uh, here I am in an authentic Mechana. Mechana, as it's, as it's pronounced. I'm murdering the name of that, by the way, but that's okay. They're apparently made for really short people. That's that's how that happens, uh, and not me. I can actually fit between the rafters, but I have to duck to get below <laughs> the pilings. And everything in here is authentic. The traditional dress, uh, the actual fabric that they make here, it's all actually uh, been used. For instance, there's uh, musical instruments over here <coughs> that, that are actually have been used in the past and played. And these are all actually the, the E string on a, on a regular guitar. We're on the second floor of a building, but most of the time, uh, uh, the Mechana is, uh, uh, is built underground uh, because this area traditionally is the warmest area of Bulgaria and therefore being underground, it maintains a constant temperature. The coolest and, and uh, most important part though of the Mechana is the fireplace. Uh, this one is, as you can see, not huge. It's just a traditional sort of fireplace surrounded by stone, all stonework, every, all, all in the walls and everything, all the masonry is stone. There's no, uh, well, at least there's not a lot of uh, brick style masonry. So uh, there's, little, there's little teas and neat little trinkets. Um, there's an iron here that was actually a real iron. <laughs> um, that's really neat. neat. Little children's toys, um, and on the walls. So like, there's there's like real fabrics, um, and over here there's like a real traditional dress. This was actually worn by uh, someone. They don't 
they don't um i mean i think this is probably the closest it comes to like like an ornamental style of decoration but they like to put wagon wheels hang them from the ceilings and then have like gourds turned upside down and then they plug a bunch of lights into it uh, they like to make uh, their own iron cast uh, bells hang the bells and i'm assuming they blow in the wind or something like this um, they like to make other sorts of things out of metals. They, they just love gourds. They like to paint them and cut little holes in them and put stuff in them and hang them on the side of the wall. And uh, they'll hang like old vegetables that are dried out like corn. And I think there's even in this one, there's like a helmet from some war. It looks like maybe the First World War or something like that. I'm not really sure. And there's like um, wooden shovels and wooden spoons and all kinds of neat stuff. I'm pretty sure that the, the TV though was not really uh, authentic from like the era. For sure that's new. But anyway, this is a traditional place to eat in Bulgaria.